Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models and welcome to episode four of AK Interactive's basic weathering series. Now, in this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at washes, um, but moving along with our Whippet and our Land Rover here, um, hopefully as you can see, yes, we've um, added some um, decals to this and whatnot. Um, I've skipped decals, because it's not really sort of weathering, um, and I've done a little bit of painting with tires and the tracks and, and, and all these kind of things. Now, with the tracks just to sort of let you know what I've been using because um, I know some of you like to know what colors I use and everything um, for our rubber tires here I have been using AK 720 rubber tires um, specifically a color made for for that task and then for our tracks I've used dark tracks which is AK 722 now what I've done here is um, I've done the tracks. I haven't shown you how to do them because uh, they are really sort of easy. And I love these tracks that you get with Ming as well because as you can see, so easy to build and they just they just conform absolutely beautifully and everything. Um, but all I've done with these is hopefully if we just bring you in and sort of show you is I've sprayed them our um, dark tracks color and then all I've done is come along with a track wash. Uh, and the reason I didn't show you this, because it was it was as simple as spray it, dark tracks, and then literally just brush on all over, no messing about um, our um, track wash here, which is AK083 by AK Interactive. So um, really, really sort of easy effect just to sort of get them um, sort of looking almost a little bit rusty ish but um, really these tracks are going to get so muddied up and everything you're probably not going to notice that that much but really it's a nice base to go with there so moving along with the washes um, now with washes you sort of want to get the right color uh, for you know the theater of war shall we say and what the base color is. So um, what I'm going to be using for our Whippet here is we've got a nice dark brown here which is AK045 and it's a dark brown wash which is really sort of exactly what you want. You sort of want that, you know, we've got a, a brown vehicle here and you want to sort of go really sort of darker than sort of the colour you have and this sort of really text because the whole idea of a wash is to get into all those recesses and all that detail work and create the illusion of shadows and dirt and grime building up in all the recess areas so give it a good shake um, and the way we're going to apply this is what we call a pin wash so it's a good idea to get you know, a really sort of half decent, nice sort of, I'm using a, a double zero here by Windsor & Newton, uh, but you want a paintbrush that's got a really good point to it, um, but can relatively hold the paint quite nicely. Um, so after giving it a good shake, let's just uh, show you now. Now with this one, this Whippet here, um, we're quite lucky in the sense that, um, you know, there's so many bolts all over this model. There's just so much detail going on um, that, you know, this is really sort of going to bring out all these bolts and stuff. So just dipping into our dark wash here, what we're going to do is we're just going to touch any bits of detail, right? So we've got all our bolts here. And this is why we call it a pin wash because we're using the tip of our paintbrush and we're just touching, just pinning any bits of detail, right? And that whole idea is these paints, they've got good capi capillary sort of action to it. So um, they just nicely flow around whatever detail you sort of touch. And what it's gonna do is just, it just brings all the detail to the foreground 
really really nicely right and as you can see I mean it might be a bit of a time consuming task to sort of touch all these bits of detail but it does flow maybe help get gravity to help you out as well to sort of let it flow down sort of like these little gaps areas and stuff there we go just touch that and let it flow and then sort of fill in any little areas where it's not sort of flown as much as you'd want it to right now the neater you are doing this stage um, the easier the second stage is because put up doing a pin wash normally has two parts to it so let's just finish this little bit here right right because we've got what is you know i call a clean up stage to do um, but hopefully you can sort of see how um just by applying that we've got another stage as i say to do i mean it just brings out that detail so much more than you know everywhere else um, it really does look cool um, that's sort of you know world war one trench warfare you know got a nice dark brown on there for our whip it but then um, we've got our deserty um, land rover here right um, for this color i'm going to be using i'm going to be using ak zero six six which is for dac vehicles um there, there is you can there is um a couple of options you can use with um with ak they do have another one which is the oif and the oef which is uh, for us modern vehicles you could use that color as well um this one is sort of more of a a lighter brown sort of thing uh, this is um uh, it's sort of like a darker browny bit of a greeny um, it looks a bit more dirtier I suppose really um, but we're going to use this one um, and you'll notice that this is um, a lot lighter than what we've used over there with our dark brown um, because we've, we're in a different theatre here we've got a, a much lighter camo so you know you need a, a um, I mean still you still want it to be dark but not as much as our whip it there. So just picking out uh, some detail. I mean, actually we've got our grills here. We can sort of just pin wash again, like we did before, right? And we can just let it flow into all the little bits of detail. I mean, actually with these grills, you could probably just brush it all on like so right you, you don't have to be as precise shall we say because it is like a dirty grill we can just as you see just brush that in let it flow um but maybe some details maybe around our little wheel here we can have that capillary action to just hopefully nice and flow Right, so as you can see, I'm not brushing or painting, I'm just sort of pinning it and letting that flow around. As you can see, it's just, it's, it's slowly flowing. Right, now with this as well, don't worry too much about being mega, mega neat. I mean, the neater you are, it's better for the next stage, but you know, it's so easy to clean this stuff up um, later on. As you can see there, nicely. Uh, nice capillary action that is what you want and we just want to sort of touch all these bits of detail nuts and bolts just the same as we did with our whip it there now just let it flow and just go all the way around the model 
so all the wash is now on and hopefully you can see it really does make a difference to the model if we just bring you in a bit closer uh, it really just brings all that lovely detail that is on these models right to the foreground it brings them out it shows it all off um, and it really is sort of a, a crucial sort of layer in, in weathering armoured vehicles to just bring out all that lovely gorgeous work hopefully as you can see there um, especially on our Land Rover here being um, a desert and and being the fact that we didn't do any modulation or any fancy sort of spraying on it you know it really does need that um, enhancement bringing out what detail is on here um, and it does just liven up so so lovely now although this is a pin wash and as careful as you may be to sort of get it to go on all the detail work and recess areas um, you, you're still going to make mistakes and you don't want to sort of be too sort of obsessed about not making mistakes States because uh, because we do use enamel um, they're, they're enamel based um, what this means is is enamels take so much longer to dry than acrylic paints so it does mean it gives us um, time to play around and sort of basically sort of correct any sort of mistakes that we've done um, now to do this you want to be using um, some odorless thinners I really do recommend you do buy um, the manufacturers um, thinners that they recommend um, so in this case we've got AK's odorless thinners which is AK049 um, now I recommend this because I know a lot of people say can't you just go off to a DIY store and buy some white spirits or can't you just use some turpentine or something like that and yeah you could you could go off and you could buy a big one litre bottle and save yourself a load of money um, but then you know, white spirits and turpentines and all these things, they have um, different levels of quality, different levels of intensity and strengths. Um, and the safest bet at the end of the day is the manufacturer's um, thinners because, you know, let's face it, they've got it to the right quality, the right consistency, the right strength for the job at hand. Because I have gone off and I have you know tested out you know diy store thinners turpentine and you do risk basically eating right through your paintwork and messing up your paintwork and doing a lot of damage as much as you can save money it is it is a bit of a risky task you would have to go out and buy a load of different ones and try different ones and see which ones work when you know what you've already got what you need right here and you don't need that much of it to be honest so um yeah definitely that hopefully that answers that question there so what we want to do now is um we want to correct our mistakes and even do a bit of blending and sort of um, do a bit maybe some fancy weather in here and there now what we can do is on our little Land Rover here we have got a few little mistakes where um, you know haven't quite sort of you know got it nice and perfect but that's easily corrected we just want to dip into our odorless thinners right so we've got a brush here fully loaded with odorless thinners we don't want it to be completely loaded uh, we just want our brush to be nice and moist so on a kitchen paper towel just tap the kitchen paper towel and it'll suck off um, quite a lot of the thinners off the end of the brush and giving us a moist brush which is what we want so um, just doing this little part here we've got a little uh, two sort of raised rivets here uh, haven't quite got it just the way I want it so I'm just going to sort of dab at this now sort of give it a bit of a rub and what's going to happen is we're just going to sort of tidy it up right and by tidying it up and sort of stubbing it down blending it in right we're rehydrating the thinners right so that hopefully you can sort of see you know we're getting rid of that little bit of mistake that was there and all we're leaving behind now is the thinners you know in the detail area showing off the detail hopefully you can see there nice and easy um, the same with our whip it here um, let's just find a bit of a say a nasty little bit um, you know we've got these bolts just on here again we can just dab at this right and sort of clean up these bolts i.e. I've got sort of like a bit of it on the top now you want to sort of also at the same time you want to be you know kitchen paper towel and just sort of clean up your brush as you go along re-moisten if you need to 
right and we just sort of tidy it up just dabbing on it keeping your brush clean right getting some more thinners on the end of the brush if you need to make sure you just touch the kitchen paper towel to make your paintbrush moist and you just go around just touching up right just touching up cleaning up making it look just the way you want it um, there are other ways other things we can use we can use I mean the paintbrush is sort of more precise but if you want to speed things up in certain areas you can use a cotton wool bud right we dip that into the thinners right and again just roll it on a kitchen paper towel right just to make that cotton wool bud just moist and what we can do we can sort of maybe a little bit quicker sort of wipe up some of these areas where we've made mistakes got just a little bit just here yeah boom wipe that up we get rid of the mistakes right they're on the surface but we're leaving behind in all the raised and recessed detail area we're just leaving behind our wash which is just what we want it's all nice and neat and there we go it just cleans that up and gets it all looking good now um you know depending on how much of a mistake you've made depends on how long this is going to take admittedly this in this model particular this whippy has got bags and bags of detail hopefully you can see there just tons and tons of detail so this one is taking a bit of time our land rover here um there isn't so much detail on this one so it is um, coming along rather rather quickly um, but it is really sort of when it comes to armored vehicles and aircraft you know filling in those recess panel lines and the raised detailed areas it really does set your model off and it is sort of like a crucial um, stage in modeling so uh, you know definitely take your time with this and get it right um, so next up now we're going to be um, taking a look at another weather effect where we look at um, streaking effects